If a lot of autistic people are saying, yes, that's me, then you've written an autistic character, whether you intended to or not. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I am Sam, and I was recently diagnosed with autism as an adult. I now make videos about autism and neurodiversity right here on YouTube every single week. So please subscribe and stick around if you think you might like that kind of content. One of the first videos I ever did for this channel last year when I had 100 subscribers was this autistic headcanon video. And uh, no, I don't know what that thumbnail is. Um, I don't know why I'm making that expression. I don't know what I was thinking. But I have received so many suggestions in the comments of that video and just random suggestions on my Instagram and stuff like that, that I thought it was time to do another one. And as always, feel free to leave your suggestions down in the comments below. So what on earth are autistic headcanons? They are basically fictional characters that we watch and relate to, and we can see a lot of signs that they are probably autistic, whether the writers intended them that way or not. When there are so few characters who are actually described as being autistic on TV or in films or in literature, we're basically, I don't want to say grasping at straws, but you know, I think it's completely legitimate that we are looking for characters to relate to. And for me, headcanons are kind of like fun because there's no issues around armchair diagnosing real people, but nobody is harmed by this hypothesizing. It's harmless fun. But it's fun to see and to talk about the aspects of different characters that we relate to or maybe related to when we were younger and we didn't know why we did at the time. So we can look back and go, oh, yeah, I see why Phoebe from Friends was my favourite, you know. Was she my favourite? I definitely related more to her. And you know, we live in a world where we don't have a lot of autistic role models, and if you're talking about female role models especially, you're looking at kind of like Temple Grandin or Greta Thunberg. So I really think that we do need to reclaim some characters, whether they were written with autism in mind or not. Because in my opinion, as a writer, you can't write a character and swathes of autistic people come out and say, that's just like me, that is me. And then they say, no, 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 this, this character is not autistic. She's just a bit quirky. She's just a bit unique. She's just very intelligent. She's just this, come on. If a lot of autistic people are saying, yes, that's me, then you've written an autistic character, whether you intended to or not. So speaking of that particular situation, possibly one of the most mentioned characters to me is Dr. Temperance Brennan from Bones. Now, Bones was one of those things that kind of passed me by when it actually aired, but because so many people on my last video were just saying, Bones, Bones, you have to watch Bones. I actually went out and binge watched 12 seasons of the show just for this video. You're welcome, guys. And you are all indeed correct. While it appears to have been loosely denied by the creators or writers, Emily, 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 Emily de Chanel, de Chanel? <laughs> I should have worked out how to pronounce this before I started filming, shouldn't I? Emily de Chanel, I don't even know, this actress, her portrayal of Dr. Temperance Brennan hits home sometimes a little too much for me. There are conversations and discussions that she has in the show, which I have had almost the exact same conversation with my partner, you know, word for word, and situations where it made me slightly uncomfortable because I realized watching her, how other people might see me. They might see me as cold or hyper-rational or something like that. All of these things that are kind of like alluded to in the show. Of course, she's never officially diagnosed autistic, but it's obvious, it's obvious. But I really think she is a beautifully written autistic character, um, even though she was never meant to be. I relate a lot to her, especially her ability to compartmentalize her emotions and her portrayal as seeming cold, but actually being very hyper kind of empathetic and with a kind of atypical expression of this. And I think there are many characters on that show who are probably also autistic too. Dr. Addy, for example, Dr. Hodgins, and a couple of the interns. But to me, that doesn't seem that unlikely because I imagine people working in the field of forensic anthropology, it's kind of, it's pretty niche. They're probably heavily skewed towards autistic people anyway. Right, next up, which was kind of like a throwaway comment from someone, but it sort of stuck around in my brain and percolated. So I'm not entirely 100% convinced on this one, but let's discuss this one further. Uh, Walter Bishop from Fringe. Now, speaking of TV shows that I really need to go back and binge watch, I have not seen Fringe in years. But as soon as it was mentioned, I was like, 
yes, yes, this actually makes sense. He is basically a character that is portrayed as almost senile. Um, he might be suffering from some other sort of mental condition, maybe schizophrenia. And he is definitely sort of portrayed as like a bit of a mad scientist trope. But weren't mad scientists like a trope because they were probably also a bit autistic? Ugh. I know I shouldn't say a bit autistic, but you know what I mean. I think Walter Bishop probably is an example of someone who is autistic, but has a lot of other things going on at the same time. You know, he might be the king of comorbidity, for example. But um, I can understand why people might not want to see that because they don't want to associate autism with madness or autism with, uh, you know, other mental health conditions or something like that. But I personally think that, you know, the way he likes certain things, um, his perception of the world, I think all of that can be explained by autism. But this one is one that I'm willing to debate on because I think there are alternative interpretations of his character. Next up is something that I am really not willing to debate because my mind is made up and that is Elsa from Frozen, Frozen 1 and Frozen 2. To me, her character is basically a metaphor for finding out about your autistic self and then kind of like self-actualizing into the person that you meant to be. Obviously both of the movies, oh, they're just great, I love them, uh, but th they have themes of kind of hiding your true self, conceal, don't feel, um, finding yourself again on your own terms and that resonates with me very strongly as someone diagnosed in adulthood because like my life pre-diagnosis was all about conceal, don't feel, don't let it show. How many words of this can I say before I get a copyright strike? I don't know. But then when she accidentally shows everyone her powers, which might be a metaphor for stimming, or they might just be a metaphor for being your sort of authentic autistic self, she freaks out and isolates herself in an ice castle, which, you know, I relate to. But by the end of Frozen 2, spoilers? You know, she wants to embrace her power and live life on her own terms and, and, and be her authentic self. And I think that that's a really powerful message. And uh, gosh, if only there would be an autistic Disney princess. But I strongly believe that she is one and you can argue with me, but I am unyielding on this point. I mean, she is not very good at relating to other people. She's always felt different to her peers and lost and isolated. And she struggled to fit in with everybody's expectations of her. And obviously, uh, you know, Disney always does the royalty thing, the princess or queen thing. So her expectations are that she will take the throne and that sort of thing. But, you know, if you look at it from a slightly more metaphorical uh, point of view, you know, I struggle to fit other people's expectations of me because it's a life that I cannot live. No matter how much I try, I cannot be this person that they expect me to be kind of thing. And of course, the song Show Yourself, which I don't know why everybody is going on about Into the Unknown as, as the song, because to me, the song of Frozen 2 is Show Yourself. If that is not an autistic anthem for taking off the mask, I don't know what is. So next up, I want to talk about Elsa and Casey from Atypical. Lots of Elsa's in this. Although Sam is the main character of the show, after which it's named, he is the autistic character in the show. The only diagnosed character. I desperately hope that they save this show by exploring the possibility that Elsa and Casey, who are the mother and daughter on the show, are possibly autistic as well. I think that would be a fantastic direction to take it in, and I don't think it's a reach. I don't think it is. I think they've, I personally believe they have been building Elsa up since the beginning, because if you don't notice, they have been, she's been subtly stimming this whole time. Some of the first episodes, I, I could see her, she was doing this. Um, and if you go back and watch the show, I think that there are so many little hidden hints, and maybe I'm giving them too much credit on this, possibly, but the, I, I can see it. She also has an extremely flat emotional affect and feels like she has to kind of put on her face, put on her smile and her emotions and act out this part of the mum. It's interesting though, because she's kind of like an autism mum, but potentially also autistic herself. I wonder whether that is true to real life anywhere. Casey, who's, his, uh, who's Sam's sister on the show, was a little bit like me as a teenager in a lot of ways, uh, kind of explosive, uh, poor emotional regulation, I guess, and definitely like trying to relieve discomfort by making jokes, um, whether they're good jokes or not, I don't know. So those two characters, I, c I could definitely see that they might be autistic. I don't think that's the direction the show will take. I kind of like, but also don't like the show. It's certainly enjoyable to watch, and I suppose it's positive in a lot of ways about autism, but it's rather stereotypical. And there are a lot of missed opportunities. 
If the writers are watching this, I am totally up for guest writing the episode where Elsa thinks she might be autistic and goes down the internet rabbit hole and I can star as me on my YouTube video about autism in girls and then she's like, oh, finds this YouTube video and then she's spending six hours on the internet researching autism because isn't that basically what we all did? Now, next up that I strongly believe is an autistic character is Mr. Bean. Now, I read somewhere, but I cannot verify the source, of course, because I don't know Rowan Atkinson personally. I wish I did. I think he'd be a great dinner party guest. But I did read somewhere that Mr. Bean was actually based off an actual autistic relative of Rowan Atkinson. Uh, and then, of course, that evolved into more of a comic creation. Now, Mr. Bean definitely displays many autistic traits. He is mostly non-speaking, although he can speak. He stims, he takes his comfort items, he takes his teddy with him. He's oblivious to certain social cues, but he's very caring in his own way. He has a restricted diet, special interests, it's all there. And you know, the really weird thing is when I was a child, maybe starting from like age six or seven, I used to play certain characters in my head and pretend to be them, but like completely silently so no one would know what I was doing. And one of the characters that I created in my head was called, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed even saying this, was called Miss Bean. So it was like, this is way more embarrassing actually to talk about than I thought it would be. So she was like the weird niece of Mr. Bean because I was like, well, I'm not Mr. Bean because I'm a girl. <sighs> So, Miss Bean, I kind of enjoyed being her. It, it is interesting in hindsight why I felt drawn to this character and wanted to relate somehow, and that was who I wanted to play. That was, like, I wanted to be that person. And if that's not the most autistic thing you've heard all day, <laughs> I don't know what is. So the last character I want to talk about today is actually not something that anyone suggested to me, but something that I suggested to myself, and that is Eve from Wally. And I know it's a bit dodgy to compare robots to autistic people, because we do get accused of being cold and robot-like a lot of the times, but in the worldly universe, robots are very warm and personified, Ugh, so it's okay. But this is probably one of my favourite movies ever, and I'm gonna have to include it. So I actually relate quite a bit to Eve. And it's hard because obviously these characters don't talk for a lot of the movie, and when they talk they say very, very basic things, but hear me out, guys. She has a very flat emotional affect, and it really takes her a while to warm to and trust and open up to Wally. You know, her expression is like, it's her expression. When you think about how they chose to animate Wally, he was very much like, you know, he's got the little eyes that are cute and like, ah, but it takes a long time before we actually see Eve smile. Or, you know, smile with her eyes. Smize. That was a smile. How do I smize? I cannot smize. The other thing about Eve is she is very hypervigilant to threats and seems to overreact a lot. She likes pretty lights. She hyperfocuses on important tasks. And once she's hyperfocused on finding that plant, she literally shuts down or burns out to rest. You know, and the interesting thing about Wally is because you assume that they all have their own directive, that's what they were programmed to do, but obviously they have their personalities on the, within the film. And as Robots goes, she has quite the developed morality and the sense of doing things for the greater good and a sense of love. And I know that you might think that this one is kind of a stretch, but I do relate to Eve. <laughs> and I thought it was a fun one to add. Those are my autistic headcanons for this video. I hope you enjoyed the wild speculation and are ready to pounce in the comments section. Um, please let me know what you thought of this video and whether you have any further autistic headcanons to suggest to me. So I hope you like this one and I will see you next time.